Good day and welcome to Canadian Formal. My name is Curtis Allen and I have a passion for keeping the men of the Great White North looking and feeling their very best. On today's episode, we will be building a ball ensemble from bottom to top and top to bottom. Stay tuned. Welcome and thank you for joining me today. So we are going to build an ensemble for autumn. And we are going to start with this very simple base and work our ways up, including footwear and accessories. Very important. So let's start with the base. I'm wearing a very simple pair of camel colored Calvin Klein chinos. This is a slim fit chino. And I chose it because it is a very neutral, light tone, excellent for dressing up or dressing down in the fall. And I paired that with a little bit louder top with this uh, slim fit Hugo Boss button down which has a checkerboard of fuchsia and orange lines. So, keeping in mind this is just a base. I would not go out in public wearing this. It is too loud for fall, perhaps in spring, but certainly too loud for fall. So let's start here and work our way through. And a great place to start, as all stylish men know, is with footwear. And today we have three different options for footwear, quite a uh, gulf between each one of them. So let's start with the more casual footwear and more functional footwear. And this is the chuck boot I have chosen the chuck -a boot because it is an excellent boot for going hiking or working in the garden. If you wanted a more formal boot, I would perhaps suggest a Chelsea boot. But this chuck -a is by Cole Haan, uh, full leather across the vamp and tongue and along the sides with a contrasting tan stitch. And behind the leather laces, you have a woven fabric. It is a uh, woven wool with a leather piping along the top. And what's great about the woven fabric is that it really hugs the contours of your ankle, providing a lot of comfort, but still a good deal of stability. And with stability in mind, we turn the shoe up and look at the bottom. The bottom is rubber, no surprise. But what is surprising is that instead of full rubber, it is little rubber nibs that run all the way down um, from front to back of the shoe and even a little bit along the back. Excellent for durability, excellent for traction. Um, I've had these boots for six or seven years and a great boot for taking a nice long hike. But if you are going to stay within civilization, um, but you still want something casual, I would look into a option like a sneaker, not a running shoe. A big distinction, no one is running marathons in these. But a sneaker is great because a lot of sneaker options are all leather uppers. And I like the formality of a all leather upper. This is a combination of solid uh, vegetable tan leather and perforated 
leather. The perforations are good for uh, venting and air circulation. Very good that way. And it brings down the formality. What also brings down the formality is the foam white um, sole and the white laces. If you wanted to dress this up a little bit, you could replace the white laces with a waxed brown lace. Uh, but I do like the versatility of the white laces. But if you are going out in the evening or going out to a business lunch or really dining in at all, I would not wear sneakers dining in. But if you are dining in, I would go with the more formal option of a dress shoe. Now, dress shoe is a very open and very vague term. This is a Derby shoe. This is a Burberry uh, Derby shoe, full leather upper, of course, and a leather sole as well. Um, looks as though it has a very traditional lacing pattern. It does not. These are actually elastic lacing, making this a slip-on without, of course, being a loafer. Being a slip-on is excellent for comfort and convenience. And with all leather shoes, you want to keep them conditioned, polished, and always have shoe trees in them as well. Um, if you are going to be investing hundreds of dollars into a single pair of shoes, the least you can do is invest 20 or 30 dollars in a nice pair of shoe trees. So do that and your shoes will last quite a bit longer and keep their shape quite a bit longer, uh, prevent cracking, and prevent um, those unsightly creases along the vamp of the shoe. But whatever your day holds in store for you, uh, choose your footwear accordingly. But moving on from footwear, we are going to address some uh, top coats. And I say top coats plural because I always like to start I like to start with a blazer or sport jacket this is a wool sport jacket uh, two button by Talia with a silk lining and we'll just throw this on here and What a sport jacket does is instantly elevates the formality. But because it's not a suit, of course the trousers are completely different. It allows the jacket to move comfortably between formal and casual. You could even wear this with the sneakers. I would not wear them with the chuckas. Um, I would wear them with Chelsea boots, if you have uh, Chelsea boots, or of course, a dress shoe, um, several varieties of dress shoe would work, uh, Darby like we have here, an Oxford, uh, a wingtip, or even a spectator would work, but what you get with a jacket is number one, it's going to hide the very loud button down that I have here. So you just get that nice peak of it through the middle. And that's, that's all you need for fall, especially if you're going out in the evening, 
uh, you don't want to be too loud and that brings me to another aspect of the jacket which is the silk lining most jackets will have a silk lining some jackets like to get a bit adventurous with their silk lining go with a very high contrasting color I don't like that I don't want to open my jacket for dinner and blind the people at the next table because I've gone with a fire engine red lining with my black or very dark brown jacket but this is merely top coat number one and it could work with the addition of a secondary coat which is which is one of my personal favorites a trench coat trench coats are so versatile they again work so well between casual and formal they can go right over your suit jacket but I always prefer to take the suit jacket off if you're going to wear a trench coat and bring the jacket separately bring the sport coat separately it just makes the fit of the trench coat easier and you avoid unnecessary wrinkles on your sport jacket so with the trench coat on here you can go a couple different ways with the trench coat you can go traditional with just doing buttons down or you could also flip the lapels up and with the lapels up you can pull collars and flaps around so that it uh, looks a bit more formal more of that military-esque look um, which of course is the heritage and the history behind the trench coat is the military so the trench coat is great it can be worn with just about anything if you're going for a long walk going for lunch um, going out in the evening as long as it's not too formal of an event if it's black tie or white tie I certainly would not wear a trench coat I would go with a, a darker wool overcoat but being that we're just in fall and not in winter I would leave the heavy wool jacket that's the other great thing about a trench coat is it's lighter provides some warmth without being too hot but once you have your jacket selected we can move into accessories so let me put my let's say we're going out with the sport jacket let's start with accessories so you've got either your sneaker or your dress shoe along with that and then we start and then we start with the most important accessory I wouldn't even call it an accessory per se I would say it's just part of any outfit is a belt now here I have a chocolate brown um, leather Versace belt I would almost always go with a leather belt correct that I would always go with a leather belt uh, it just works in all all occasions fabric woven belt uh, just looks far too casual for my sense but what you'll notice about the belt here is you have the dark brown 
you also have the silver buckle. A silver buckle is great because it works with black, with brown, with gray, with blue. Um, the only caveat to a silver buckle is jewelry. Jewelry is including watches, uh, necklaces, rings, etc., and cufflinks. If you're wearing gold cufflinks, I would not go with a silver buckle, but if you are wearing um, silver, of course, black, onyx, blue, cufflinks, uh, it works very well. So do keep that in mind. Belt is something you should always wear, especially if your trouser is a uh, button fastening in the front. You don't want that button sticking out like a sore thumb. Not, not a good look and not something we advise here at Canadian Formal. So now that you've got everything ready to go, well, almost everything. There are two key pieces left. These are optional, but I would opt to include them. Number one is a scarf. And the reason I would almost always include a scarf is because in the fall, you can get away with something like I have here, which is a silk scarf. This is a Burberry 100% uh, silk scarf with the green tones, an emerald green and a seafoam green uh, patching, which of course works well with almost any brown tone. But you also have the mustard yellow at the bottom with of course green emblem uh, there for Burberry. But with a scarf, what you want to do is make sure you're wearing it correctly. And by correctly, I mean this. You fold it in half. So you still get good thickness, but you get a little extra warmth doubling it up. And you want to keep the seams, the stitch side, into your body so you want it folded in in half lengthwise seams into your body wrap around the neck and pull through and once that is complete you have this overhang which can come straight down and then pull the jacket and clasp that shut so that you get it right between the lapels. That way, if you are going out and pull that pop of yellow through, nice, nice little pop of color there. And you get that when you're going out. Provide some warmth, not too hot, like a woolen or a cashmere scarf. So with all that in mind, there's only one piece of the puzzle left, and that is gloves. Um, I'm not a big fan of hats or uh, up here in Canada, toques in the fall. I love them in the winter, uh, but in the fall, I like to go hatless if possible or But what I do always love is gloves. Gloves are an excellent accessory. Again, providing warmth like the scarf because I don't know about you, but my hands always feel colder than the rest of my body. Um, worse blood circulation. So, having gloves I like a lined glove, 
unlined gloves work well also. Uh, driving gloves are unlined, excellent, very comfortable. And suede gloves are also a good option. I like a darker color, whether you go with leather or suede. Um, and this particular pair has a lighter lining. Um, I love a lighter lining, adds a little bit of a contrast, and works with other tones, like how it works with the chinos I'm wearing today. So, you've got your gloves, you've got your scarf, You've got either one or two coats on. Um, definitely one, uh, certainly with the jacket, uh, I, would, I would not go out in just the button down. If you do want to go out uh, without a sports coat though, you could always wear a vest or cardigan again with the uh, button down. So, with all that said here, thank you so much for joining me, and stay stylish.